high cost of living in Nigeria continues to be a major source of concern for many citizens. And the recent protests in Mina, the Niger state capital, serve as a stark reminder of the impact of rising prices on everyday life in Nigeria. In Nigeria today, residents of Mina took to the streets in protest against the increasing cost of essential items, including food, transportation and housing. The protests were a response to uh, the significant hardships that individuals and families are facing as a result of the rising cost of living. The protesters expressed their frustrations with a relentless increase in the prices of essential goods and services which have outpaced the growth of incomes and wages. The rising cost of living has made it challenging for many Nigerians now to even afford basic necessities leading to widespread dissatisfaction. Amidst these protests, residents are calling for urgent government intervention to address the root causes of the high cost of living. They are advocating for policies that will mitigate the economic pressures that are currently facing, including measures to stabilize food prices, improve transportation, and make housing more affordable. These issues go beyond Amina and resonates with the millions of Nigerians who are grappling with the challenges of inflation and the high cost of living. The protests in Mina is a reflection of the broader societal impact of these economic challenges and highlights the urgent need for sustainable solutions. In our discussion with analysts tonight, the immense pressure on the purchasing power of Nigerians, coupled with implications of high cost of living extended beyond economic hardship, impacting social stability and overall well-being, will all be addressed, plus immediate solutions to douse tension across the nation. I am your carrier, Clinton. Thanks for joining us and welcome to Nigeria Today. Joining us in the studio tonight, we have two distinguished guests. Jide Uju is an international and public affairs analyst, and of course, a friend of the house. Thank you for coming tonight, coming on the program. <laughs> and also, we have our second guest, is Yushou Liu. He's an economist and a public affairs analyst, also a friend of the house. Oh, thank you. Good, Good to yeah, have thank you. you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> so, Jide, uh, I will just go straight, uh, straight to the point. Y you know, how would you define? You saw the, pro the protest, of course, that happened in, in Mina. Now, I would just say, how would you define the main factors contributing to the cost of high living in the country? And um, do you think we are at crossroads here? We are indeed at a crossroad. Truth be told, we are at a crossroad. Mm -hmm. Um, someone said before we came on board that there is hunger strike. In the context of uh, English, your hunger strike is when you refuse to eat because you are protesting. Mm. So a prisoner or prisoner of conscience can decide, I will starve to death and my blood will be on you. But the hunger strike we saw in Mina, that is the truth and the real hunger strike. What we are experiencing in Nigeria is not peculiar to us. It's a global phenomenon. In France, in UK, in US, workers are going on strike, demanding for higher wages. Mm. Because the rising cost of living is not peculiar to us. Even all over African countries, same of same. Mm. However, just imagine, we are a country of 200 million. We are more like one third of the entire Europe. Whatever happens in Nigeria affects Africa. Right now, our leaders need to do more to mitigate this rising cost of living. Over the weekend, I don't know whether it's true or not, the was alleged to have said that you know, price of you know, payments will, will soon go up. And that is what the labor unions have tried to 
mitigate to ensure that there is no one dime on top of how much we are buying. Because part of you ask me, why the rising cost of living? Was it like this before May 29? From 180, 170 naira per liter of PMS, it went to 660. <coughs> okay. Uh, no. So then, of course, the floating of the exchange, the floating of the naira, which has also uh, the 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 uh, how do I call it? It, it has it has the the uh, it has not uh, been amenable to all the efforts of the CBN and the governor. And that those two those two things coupled with insecurity were the core reason for this rising cost of living. Okay. Because the protest in Mina was about cost uh, I mean food insecurity. Mm. They were talking of you no know, the cost of bread, the cost of rice, the cost of grain rising. Okay, in situations where farmers could no longer farm. How do you want to have full security? Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, GD. I will have to uh, allow uh, Yushao to come in here. Now, uh, Yushao, we've had a situation, uh, of course, I know quite a lot of uh, uh, Nigerians have been complaining of rising costs of, um, of food and, of course, other even basic necessities of life. But the situation where people now take to the streets to, you know, to protest the rising costs, of uh, of leaving now what should nigerians be mindful of at this point uh i think uh nigerians are mindful of their statehood uh, because we only have nigeria uh, the only things that should be mind for is the leadership consequences uh it appears we are taking many things for granted especially when it comes to cost of living Remember, over 48 months, we have been recording high inflation changes rapidly, mm. and all the policy adjustments cough, proof abortive, and we have said times that number that we are not only facing inflationary trend as a challenge, but we are facing cost of living crisis. And when you put cause of living crisis, you cannot rule out coming to street. And that is exactly the phenomenon. In a program of this nature, I have highlighted that cost of living crisis occurs when individual households cannot meet up with the basic responsibility of feeding the family. And that is exactly the situation on ground. However, there is a need for caution at this stage. One, we have said that state policymakers must check supply bottlenecks. Supply bottlenecks of foods. These are very significant if you check the production zones. Now, I have said it severally that look, who told us that it's, we, we must die? Oh, we must face consequences of civil unrest before we attend to supply of basic food in, in, in an economy. Many economies are importing what they consume. Nobody, there is no book that is written, you must, you must eat from what you produce in the entire economic concept. But it is of economic advantage to be producing. But once you don't have, what do you do? I have told you. Since when we are interpreting the, uh, the, 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 the activities of uh, raising NPR, NPR to curb inflation, I said, look, we have to avoid using orthodox uh, 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 measures to check the present predicament that we are facing. We have to check on orthodox, that is unconventional. Now, there is a, there is a, there is a policy of on food security. This policy uh, 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 depicts that you must have the number of total population on ground and you must have the required metric tons of food required. In some cases, we produce and erosion will come, flooding will come and take away 40% and we are just sitting. Are you getting it? Doing nothing to argument 
if you cannot argument that one, it will become a crisis when it is compounded. And that is the situation on ground. Now, uh, some middlemen have took over the advantage that we cannot import anything. So they are buying even from the product, from the, from the planting season. They are buying what to be produced. And at the end, they will keep it somewhere. And if these activities are not checked, supply will never be regular. Mm. And it will continue to give very serious tension to an income group that is not changing. Okay, thank you very much. Now, GD, of course, uh, just like you rightly uh, mentioned there or in your opening remark, it doesn't really look too good to, you know, see people protest over, you know, uh, certain things, especially cost of living. Of, co of course, you also mentioned it might escalate to something else, which we don't pray for, though. Now, what steps can be taken to ensure that these, uh, this kind of protest does not replicate in other states? Well, it's in the hand of the government. Um, don't forget, uh, action and reaction are equal and opposite. Mm. When people are pushed to the world, they look back. Issue of insecurity is plaguing us, whether we want to admit it or here or not. And I maintained, mm -hmm. aside from what Alaji said mm -hmm. about erosion, flooding, natural disasters that is taking much of our food production, there is also the post harvest loss of about 40%. But beyond and above that, you have seen the act of banditry that have not made our farmers to stay on the farm. Yes. So, uh, federal government promise. I mean, let's take it from that palliative speech of Mr. President on July 31. I wish is the one we are, we, are, we are reviewing. It's been like seven months. July 31 to date is like seven months. Mm. What has been done? He promised 500,000 hectares of grain cultivation. He promised to subsidize fertilizers and other farm implements. He promised 3,000 CNG buses. By now, we should have seen the first batch of those CNG buses rolled out and distributed to states, even if it's state capitals that they are working right now, where people can commute with ease at a cheaper cost. You know, for those of us who no, are... But, but recently, the first batch of the CNG buses was rolled out. Where are they? So, Have you I seen any on the road? You see, they, they, I, I know how government operates. When they do something for, for optics, they, what they did was for optics. I have I commute on the road on daily basis. I have not cited one here in the federal capital territory. Okay. <laughs> there should have been he, he promised three thousand between June, August, and, and March twenty twenty four. We are looking at March. By now, we should have had even second or third batch of those buses being this because we, if we are looking at mitigating factors how you can reduce yeah. tension mm. okay. people want to have affordable transportation okay. affordable accommodation your 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 case is being attended to now <laughs> as a as a worker <laughs> <Okay>. because <laughs> the federal government had already promised that by by april mm -hmm. You are going to get um, a minimum, new Th minimum. Thank you very wage. much, Judy. I'll have to stop you there. So <laughs> <Yeah>. take a pause. <laughs> Let's pause for a moment to hear what Nigerians are saying about the ripple effect of the high cost of living in Nigeria today, as put together by Thomas Ogbetere. Don't go away. The high cost of living, first of all, we have to address minimum wage. Minimum wage is something that needs to be addressed in this country. We make a lot of money in this country. There's a lot of revenue coming in from... In fact, recently, um, um, I believe that... Uh, I think the, the Nigerian customs in, increased the tariffs and everything. So you know that there's a lot of money coming through revenue from different... from taxes, from all of all these things. So increase minimum wage because right now things are very expensive people need to live people need to survive so you have to increase that minimum which let people be able to let people have a breathing space let there be a way the government will do to cushion the effect of this high cost of living a situation where naira is now the foreign currency is now determining our economy it is very very appalling how do we handle this issue a bag of rice is how much 75,000 naira. Uh, i bought about two days ago 75,000 naira. How many people can afford 75,000 naira? 
to buy just a bag of rice. If you have family of six, that's me about two months time, your bag of rice is finished. Because that is the most common food that everybody go after right now. And dollar rate is increasing every day by day. You sleep and wake up, you see dollar rate. So you have to work on it decisively. So the president now, in his own campaign, he said that he's going to provide the gari, a wag, but we need that gari now. He has made the promise. We need the gari. We need the ewa. We need the agbado. He says, we want to see it. You understand? He has talked it. Let's see it on our table. That's what we want from him. We don't want anything, we don't want anything from like that. Welcome back. This is still Nigeria today, and um, we are looking at the high cost of living in Nigeria. And of course, I have uh, two gentlemen here in the studio. And uh, Isha, we had the reaction there. Somebody said they want the Agbaduna. So <laughs> now, uh, Isha, now, uh, looking at the, 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 the policies, the government policies, you know, can, can the policies that we have, how far have we been able to manage the situation so far? Can he effectively address the high cost of living? You see, uh, the state policies have not, have not assisted in any way uh, putting the pressure uh, to, a, to a moderate level. Uh, I'm saying this because uh, what the state has to do, like we said initially, we must know the metric tons requirement of our population. We must know the distributive mechanism of these food items. <laughs> we must know the income grouping of these individuals who are going to market. There is no point from the reaction, payment of 75,000 mm -hmm. to a 50 kg of rice stimulate two workers to com combine together with 30,000 naira to get one. Mm -hmm. And he has mentioned categorically in the statement mm -hmm. how many people can afford. If you make a simple survey out of 100 households, you will not get 20% with a half bag of rice in their homes, mm -hmm. meaning that they have to be competing in the market every day. And they have to be also struggling to make that little amount that is required to put food on their table. So in what government can do, I have said it severally. Look, state policies that has to do with the supply of food is the first thing. Supply bottlenecks. Where, where is the food? And at the same time, also one thing that is not also helping the price to come down mm -hmm. is as a result of different purchases by different government organizations in terms of palliative. You go to market, you give a government contract price of 80,000 naira per bag, and then how can poor people get that same, that same rice at that amount? Where, uh, where, where, where is our grain reserve? Where is our sellers? And at the same time, also, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, 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 say, has said that, look, we must know the actual problem in this economy. What is causing this particular issue? One is insecurity. From the production zone, they are no longer secure to produce. And if that was the trend last agri season, it, is there any change for farmers to go to the same uh, production zone? If it is not, we need a state policy at that point. That is one. Two, also, how, for how long are we waiting for any intervention to check the activities of middlemen? Middlemen have gone to all villages and they put large, stock, large stores and they are stocking food. What did government do to make sure that that storage, that particular uh, uh, syndicate, is being brought out for the public attention. Mm -hmm. So we need proactive decision to bring food out and not only bringing it out for government to encourage consumption. If we don't have enough income to consume, we will have we don't have any chance to stop protests in the street. Mm -hmm. Remember wise man saying a hungry man is an angry man. Mm -hmm. And what an angry man can do to an economy, it is to start like a child's play. From Lagos to one state, now it has come to Mina. Now it, it, is, it is now going to send signal. So there is need for government to quickly make an intervention. In that intervention is very necessary, but not with just policy statement, with policy action. This policy action is what we can have. It is true that globally there is 
the, the, the a lot of prejudice but it's not this do all economists are not facing the same circumstance in american economy they are facing their challenge differently in sudan economy they are facing their own differently but in nigerian context mm. what we have never seen is what we are seeing but we, we also recently uh, made to understand that uh, nigeria is the the high the cost of living in nigeria is the lowest in africa uh, that does not that does not mean that, okay. no 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 <laughs> you, you see, if it is the lowest, but w which country has the highest population? Okay, no, thank you very much. <laughs> now, GD, having <laughs> had all uh, you shall uh, have to say, that what measures can be put in place? I'm talking about individual level and, and government level to mitigate the high cost of living. Because there seems to be tension now. There is tension in the land and mm. we can't run away from that. And I think the earlier uh, political elites rise up to the occasion, mm -hmm the better for us. I want the spirit that Nigerians show during COVID-19 to be brought back. That spirit of being your brother's keeper. When individuals were helping communities, providing food, succor, beyond what the federal and state government was able to do. You understand, during that COVID-19 in 2020, people in the community, churches, mosques, were organizing food. No, this is the time to, to awaken. This is not the time for church to start building uh, 200,000 new churches and all of that. This is the time to retain retainership of your members. How are you caring for them? This is not the time for churches and the general officers to be buying new jets and all of that. This is the time to show care the way Jesus showed in the Bible. This is the time for us to show our humanity. If you are a billionaire, you are a millionaire. Even if it's your community, help out. See what you can do. And before I forget, let's tackle corruption. We have talked about insecurity. Yesterday, it was reported in one of the dailies I will mention, but it's there, that EFCC have been able to recover 30 billion from Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, and another 500 million. It was in yesterday, Sunday, Sunday Punch, let me be specific. Now, that money was meant for the poor and vulnerable. Yes. You get, um, um, Clinton, that money was meant to be disbursed for people that we see protesting in Mina. Remember the federal government said they are going to give support to 15 million households at 25,000 hours per month for the month of October, November, and December. Then the bubble burst. We start hearing somebody 37.1 billion, another 44 billion, another 585 million. Why are we this wicked? Why can't we be our brothers? Because those who are robbing Peter to pay Paul, those who are stealing us bright, those who are engaging in these corrupt practices are not helping government. Thank you. Government made effort to, to, to minimize much. our pains. But some people in position of authority are abusing their privileges and, and, and lining their pulses. Thank you very it's much, not, Jide. It's not right. Thank you very much, Jide. Uh, the bottom line is we should be our brother's keeper. Well, that's it on Nigeria today. We appreciate our guest, Jide Ujo, International and Public Affairs Analyst. Thank you so much for your time, My your pleasure. contribution. And also, Yusha Liu, Economist and Public Affairs Analyst. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. You. Mm -hmm. And also, thank you for being part of the program. Don't forget Nigeria today is weekday at 7.30 p.m. on NTA News 24. You can also watch this and other episodes on www.youtube.com slash NTA News 24 Hub. Once again, thank you for watching. I am your carrier, Clinton saying bye for now. Mm -hmm.